Welcome to another motherboard unboxing. This is the Z77X, which as you guys might imagine, uses the Z77 chipset from Intel, UD5H. UD implies that there is ultra durable technology, but wait, it's not ultra durable five because that's not out yet. The highest ultra durable we have is ultra durable four and this one has it. So moving along. We've got their 3D BIOS logo here, which includes the dual UEFI BIOS with their unique graphical interface that allows you to actually click on the various parts of your board in order to access them. So you want to access things about the SATA ports, you just click on the SATA ports. A bit more intuitive than, you know, oh shoot, where do they usually keep that? See, I can't even remember where they usually keep the SATA options because they're all over the place. It can be in like integrated peripherals sometimes. What does that even mean, integrated peripheral SATA port? Anyway, so Gigabyte wants to make that simpler. It also includes 3D Power, which is their all digital engine, meaning they are using all digital PWM for this particular motherboard. This supports the latest Intel Core i7 third generation processors on the 1155 socket. Z77 chipset we covered. PCI Express Gen 3 is supported by this board, so you want to run your latest GTX 680. I guess by the time you watch this video, it might not be the latest, but 680 or Radeon HD 7970 and get the absolute most out of it. Yes, the extra 1% or so. PCI Express Gen 3 is the way to go. It's more important for SLI or Crossfire though, and I'll cover that more later. The MSATA connector is on board, which I'll cover more once we've opened it up, and Ultra Durable 4. So this is a bunch of stuff. High temperature protection, humidity protection using their new woven glass fiber, or sorry, woven glass fabric PCB, which can be relevant if you are in a high humidity environment, such as say for example, Taiwan. Or, I mean, you know, I've had situations where I've accidentally spilled water on a board. I hope it would help with that, although, you know, no promises there, guys. Electrostatic protection, so they've integrated circuitry that actually protects the board from being damaged in the event of an electrostatic accident. And power failure protection, once again, design choices that they've made to help mitigate the risk of that permanently damaging your motherboard. So we'll leave that there so that we don't miss anything. Okay, and let's open this bad boy up. So the motherboard comes first, but I'm gonna make you guys wait for it. And we'll go through the, no, 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 calm down slick. We'll do the motherboard later. <laughs> gonna go through the accessories first. So we have two right angle SATA cables, one right angle SATA cable and a straight SATA cable. So three right angles and one straight. Then we have a USB 3.0 front panel, three and a half inch bay user manual as well as driver and utility DVD. Don't use this, download the latest from the Gigabyte website. There's also, huh, look at that. They, they opened it up to the page with the box contents and the motherboard layout. See, those are the little touches that you gotta appreciate. Gigabyte sticker, multilingual installation guidebook with more languages than I can speak. Uh, we have a flexible black SLI bridge, the very best kind. We also have an I.O. plate that is handily color coded. Love color coding, love things that are black, and love small finishing touches. So far, Gigabyte A plus as far as the included accessories are going. Next, let's get the board opened up here. This is a resealed board, it's a sample board, so yeah, yours won't look like that, unless you buy this one. Haha, <laughs> no, just kidding. You won't get this one. Um, here we go. So you know what? Let's shift our angle a little bit here. Well, I meant to turn the camera off for now. And we're ready. All right, so at the very center of the board, the very focal point for me is the new, well, not new, LGA 1155 socket supporting the new uh, Ivy Bridge codenamed Intel Core i7 and i5 and i3 Generation 3 processors. The thing we also find right next to it is another cool Intel technology that is Intel Smart Response technology. You can throw a little PCIe SSD in here, not going to take up any of your PCI slots or any of your SATA ports, and you can use that to run Intel SRT caching off of a drive that you have connected to the system. Very, very cool. All right, we've got our power delivery circuitry here along with beefy heat sinks that are connected by a heat pipe to the beefy heat sink that is also installed on the chipset itself. We have our eight pin connector in its ideal location at the top left of the board. And we'll go around and count the PWM fan headers at the end of the video. This right here is dual channel DDR3 memory supporting up to four DIMMs. That, so that is a chipset thing, guys. This is not a replacement for X79. This is a replacement for Z68 so we still see dual channel DDR3. 
We have a CMOS switch as well as a reset switch and a power button built into the most sensible possible location up here at the top right of the board. Now this is, excel this is excellent. This is only a UD5 level board, so this isn't even a top end board, but look at this. It's got all of your voltage checkpoints. That's, that's like outstanding. I cannot stress enough how outstanding that is. You can check all your voltages with a multimeter, even on this like sort of high end, but not quite like a UD7 or, uh, or a G1 series board. Very cool. The 24 pin connectors in its ideal location along the uh, far right of the board. And check this out. If you want additional power for your graphics cards, you can use a SATA connector instead of a Molex. I think this is a great design choice and I, uh, yeah, appreciate that as a user. All right, here we go. SATA 2 port will be disabled when mSATA slot is in use. So there you go. It is running off of the... Okay, so you do use up a port, but I guess you get the benefit of like it looking badass. And you don't have to use up an actual bay in your case. So there, there's the benefit. All right. These guys right here are SATA 3 6 gigabit per second. These ones right here are SATA 2 3 gigabit per second. And these ones are also, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. These four are SATA 2 6 3 gigabit per second. And then these four are SATA 3 6 gigabit per second. This one is also SATA 3 6 gigabit per second. And check this out two front panel USB 3.0 ports. So this is interesting because according to the Intel, three front panel USB 3.0 ports. This is interesting because according to the Intel spec, the front panel USB 3 port, like the Intel, the Intel USB 3 ports have to be integrated with two in the front, two in the back. So on this particular board, you're gonna be allowed to choose whether you wanna run off of the Intel USB 3 chip or off of the third party USB 3 chip. We have another SATA 3 port, I think I mentioned that. And here are all of our front panel switches. Front USB with extra power for faster charging. Front panel USB 2 with not extra power for charging. We have our TPM slot as well as a front a firewire and front audio. Gigabyte has started putting front audio at the bottom of the board. Kudos Gigabyte, it used to be here and this is better. All right, having a look at the back of the board. So the Z77 chipset supports onboard video on supported Intel Core i whatever, you know, processors that do have onboard video. All the Ivy Bridge ones do. So we've got VGA, DVI, HDMI, and DisplayPort, so the full gamut of options. And what's cool is that with Lucid Virtue MVP, we actually get a lot more options in terms of a, how to connect your monitor, because you can connect it either to the discrete graphics card or the onboard graphics card, and you can choose D mode or I mode, whether you, whichever one it's connected to, it doesn't matter. Also, you can use, okay, assuming the game supports it, it comes down to software support again, assuming that the game supports it, you can use Virtue MVP to actually dramatically improve the performance of a discrete graphics card by having the onboard GPU handle basic tasks and leaving the more complicated things such as tessellation to your DirectX 11 graphics card. Interesting, hey? All right, moving on, we've got optical audio out, two USB 2.0 ports, an additional USB 2.0 port, okay, Firewire. Four USB 3.0 ports, so two of these are off the Intel chipset, two of them are off a third-party chipset. Two gigabit Ethernet ports and 7.1 audio. So, right, I said I was going to go back and count all the PWM fan headers. So here we go, one, two, don't come in too close so that they can see where they are, I think. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, five PWM fan headers. So, don't forget, oh, oh, right, 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 sorry, I almost forgot. So, it's also got integrated Creative Sound Blaster X5 MB2 audio, which has a built-in headphone amplifier. So, this is not quite as advanced a design as they've used on the past on their G1 motherboards, but it's going to be a heck of a lot better than your standard onboard audio. And then, what else are we missing here? Hold on, let me just make sure I didn't miss anything, guys. Intel Gigabit Ethernet, uh, right, yes, one of these two built-in LANs is Intel, so as opposed to a third-party chipset, which a lot of users do prefer. And finally, you know what, let's go back to the back of the box where they do have some of their other stuff. Sorry, guys. This is in lieu of notes. So that outlines, actually, yeah, you guys can just look at that if you really want to. That outlines the benefits of Ultra Durable 4, which has uh, continued to bring, you know, the same standard things like 2 ounce copper BCB, which is for better heat dissipation as well as less interference, along with a whole bunch of other cool stuff. So I think that pretty much covers it. Thank you for checking out 
my unboxing of the Z77X UD5H. And don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos. And don't forget, you can always benefit from all digital power. That is the CPU, the VTT, the memory, and the Intel HD graphics, which are all digitally powered. Ah yes, the slot layout. Sorry guys, I forgot. Three PCIe 1X slots, two PCIe 16X, well okay, three PCIe 16X slots, but more on that in a minute, and one PCI slot. So I mentioned that PCIe 3 support was gonna be important for SLI or Crossfire users on this platform. That is because these are not both full 16X. It's 16X or 8X, 8X if you have two cards in them, as per the same limitations as the Z68 platform. It's Z68, right? Yeah, Z68. Um, wow, dirt moment there, guys. Uh, <laughs> right, so remember, PCIe 3.0 8X is the same bandwidth as PCIe 16X 2.0. So that means that if you're running PCIe 3 on your CPU, remember, you need a PCIe 3 CPU, as well as your graphics cards, that 8X bandwidth is gonna be the same as last generation 16X, so there should be no performance bottleneck there at all. Finally, this PCIe 4X slot requires an Ivy Bridge 3rd Gen CPU. For more information, please refer to the user manual. So there you go. 16X, 60, or 8.8, or, and 4X, assuming you're using an Ivy Bridge CPU.